All right, I have a very unique sermon for you this morning. Um, if you can see by the title, uh, God is the Ultimate Terrorist. Now, let me explain. Okay, I love the Lord very much. He's number one in my life. Um, I'm not trying to blaspheme the Lord or anything else, but let's go with the dictionary definition of terrorist, and I'm going to show you a very important concept in this world. All right, I'll put this up on screen for you. The definition of terrorist, terrorist in the Oxford Dictionary is, quote, a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. Now, here's how this whole thing works. Imagine, if you will, if you're an atheist out there or somebody that doesn't know if you believe in God or whatever else, imagine for a minute that there's a devil. There is, but we'll just, you know, for the sake of the video here, the sake of the argument, imagine that there's a devil. What would be the best thing for him to do? It'd be for him to convince people that the one who cares about them is actually the one who is trying to destroy them. Get people to turn on God because then they'll never come to God for salvation. And that's exactly what the reality of this world is. Most people think of God as a terrorist, all right? And here's, and this is why, you know, you look up the word terrorist, it's just a recent word. It's not a very ancient word or anything. But think about that definition that we read there. A person who uses unlawful violence. Do How many people consider the laws of the Lord in their life? They consider those laws to be unlawful don't they? Atheists, take, they want to have the Ten Commandments removed out of society because they consider it unlawful. It's some kind of a bad thing or whatever. A person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, they consider me as a preacher, I, I'm a hellfire and damnation preacher, and they say, oh, you're trying to intimidate people. You're trying to use fear to control people. Uh, no, I'm not. Because you see, if you actually follow what I say, you don't have to come here. You don't have to pay me money or anything else. You don't have to be part of my cult building someplace. Um, so I'm not trying to intimidate people into getting something from them. I'm trying to warn you about what the Bible actually teaches, which I'll be showing you in today's video, uh, sermon here. A person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians. Again, think of the, the Satanists that came up with this whole definition here. And I realize that there are real terrorists out there. I get that. Um, you know, the ones sponsored by the government mostly, but uh, um, people that are against civilians. So you expect to be terrorized by your enemy's military if you're in the military yourself. But against civilians, well, that's then that's a terrorist organization. But it says here at the, the final part of the definition, in the pursuit of political aims. Hmm. Does uh, the God of heaven, does he have political aims for this earth? Yes, he does. It's called the thousand-year kingdom. Many say the, the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in order for Jesus to get that, he's going to have to terrorize the people. The Lord's going to bring such a level of terror on this world that it's never been seen before. Hmm. So while there is a real definition of a terrorist out there, a political movement of people that are uh, that don't have a whole lot of power or money or whatever behind them, and they can use t uh, fear and terror type of, of things as a form of intimidation to get you know political aims to, to happen. I get that. That's real. But you can also use it in the sense of a lot of lost people think of God as a terrorist. But what does the Bible say? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Modern... Uh, syrupy, sappy, professing Christianity. Uh, they want you to believe that God is this big loving teddy bear that lives up in the sky and just, you know, dreams of you and him having a relationship together in terms of he wants to just hug you and hold you in his soft, fuzzy arms or something. Uh, that's not the God of the Bible. All right. And the reason that they do that, by the way, the modern churches is because they're after your money. That's why. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Um, I trust that I am made manifest in your conscience. Your conscience should bear witness. Is this guy right or wrong? If you have a good conscience, one that's not been defiled with lots of mind control and brainwashing with evolutionary philosophy, that things are getting better, in other words, you should understand, hey, you know what? This guy's trying to turn things back 
to a good time, to less crime, less violence, less sin, less evil. I should have a good place in your conscience. You should say, you know what? I don't like the guy. He's, I don't like his flannel shirts or his suspenders or his whatever, his demeanor, the way that he speaks. But you know what? I know he cares about me because that's the truth. That's the reality of it. But you see, my motivation in preaching to you is I know the terror of the Lord. Because a lot of you, take this for what it's worth, a lot of you are very naive and ignorant of the reality of this world. And um, when you actually start to study things, real true history, and you, and you look at how many people have lied and deceived and all the evil that goes on in the big business world and how they're conspiring constantly to just destroy other people, how that they will get you into debt so that you can be a bond servant to them and they'll just ruin your life and teach you through the schools and through the churches and through the media and everything else that you're successful when in reality you have so many liabilities and very little assets. And they want to take everything from you eventually and just enslave you. When you start to actually understand the reality of this world, all of a sudden you start to realize, you know what? Yeah, if there is a God, then he probably would want to punish these wicked people. Hmm. That's what the terror of the Lord is there for. And if you fall into that category of, of just wicked people that don't have any conscience at all, you're just trying to kill your conscience, well, then the terror of God is upon you. He's going to come for you. He's going to get you. And I'm not your enemy for telling you. Go to the, next to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. You know, again, part of Satan's system is that he wants to get out there and he wants to kill the messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ that are actually trying to tell people about the truth, the reality of this world. Because the devil's very good at creating this artificial false world of everything always ends good, you know, and, and whatever. And, and, oh, everybody's successful and America's never been better. And, you know, yeah, we're 34 plus trillion in debt. I uh, just heard in the last 24 hours, I think a day or two ago, uh, America, the American government spent $4.2 billion with a B. But that's good. That's a good thing. That's wonderful. It's not actually, you know, with the, with the uh, modern monetary theory, I think is what it's called. Debt is actually not bad, it's actually savings. <laughs> Saw some woman, some professor, you know, saying about that, this female professor, just total nut job, what a witch. And she's a witch. Um, again, oh, you're being insulting. No, actually, she's a witch because she's bending, shaping, and changing reality. That's witchcraft. Okay, she's employing witchcraft as a university professor. Okay, <laughs> yeah, 34 trillion, that's not, it's not bad, it's savings. Unreal. And I'm not joking. Okay, you can look it up. Uh, won't get into the whole big thing. But Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Here's Jesus Christ speaking. Look what he says. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Who's he talking about? His big being daddy that lives up in heaven, the second or the first person of the Trinity? And Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, and he's saying, watch out for my daddy. He's talking about himself. <laughs> okay, now there's separation between the son and the father in the sense of body and soul. That's there, but it's the same being. There's only one person that's called God. Body, soul, spirit. That's the three parts of the one God. Man is made after the image of God, after his image, after his likeness, in other words. Um, that's there. Okay, but Jesus is saying, don't fear these people down here. The Jews at this time, when he's speaking to them, they're under Roman occupation. Hey, you see uh, those centurions over uh, the centurion over there? You see all those Roman soldiers? Don't be afraid of them. Hey, you see these guys over here? You see the all these uh, barbaric nations up north and things that the Romans are warring with? You see the ones down in Africa, the all the different people down there and the Carthaginians and the, you see the Mongols over in the east and you see all, don't be afraid of them. Fear God. Fear Him. Because He can destroy both your body and your soul in hell. And understand what it means there when it says destroy. It doesn't mean just annihilation like a lot of the false prophets teach that you go to hell and, you just, and you're burned up and that's it. Uh, no, it's eternal torment in hell proven in the scriptures. I have a whole study on that. The modern 
and a lot of modern modern devils out there, and they'll they'll change that. Now I'll go back to the Old Testament, Proverbs chapter one, the book of Proverbs. You have Psalms, which is the biggest book in your entire King James Bible, but then you have Proverbs. We'll see some really great wisdom here. Proverbs chapter one. In verse 7, you know, and again, oh, oh, I think we should report this preacher for hate speech and whatever. It's still not going to change the facts of what's going on in the world right now and what's coming to this world. See, I'm trying to warn you about this stuff. I'm trying to warn you that there's a lot of evil people out there. They have no desire for repentance. They have no desire to change their ways. And God is going to punish them with, in, with hell for all of eternity, burning in the lake of fire. They go to hell, and then later after the great white throne judgment, they go to the lake of fire. Just to be very clear about that doctrinally. I'm trying to warn you. Here's why. This is what I want for you. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's a terrible thing when you see fools and they despise wisdom and instruction. You know what? There's a lot of fools out there right now. They like to sit around playing video games. And they make fun of me because I'm trying to give them wisdom and instruction. Hey, young man, make something of your life. Don't sterilize yourself by, I don't want to go ask any pretty girls out to date. I'll just, I'll, you know, get online and have a virtual girlfriend or become a porn addict or something like that. You're destroying yourself. You're destroying your future. But I beat the top levels in my vein, video game and I'm the top player right now in the world. I need to hold on to my status in it. You're a fool. And if you feared the Lord, you would not mess with the video games. You wouldn't mess with things that waste your life away. Go to Proverbs 1, 24. Just go down in the chapter there a little bit, down to verse 24. And here's some of the uh, most interesting, uh, one of the most interesting portions of Scripture in relation to who God is and how God actually thinks. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Because I have called and ye refused. Don't ever believe this Calvinistic junk that God purposes people for hell and they have no free will and whatever else. God called them. God sent truth to them and said, Please, repent, turn. I want you to change your ways. I'll call. And they refused. Not, well, they were created that way so they had no choice. No. He called, they refused. Always remember that. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. I'll help you. Here it is. You know, the saying goes, you know, the Lord stretched out his hand and man put a nail into it, hammered him onto the cross. But ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. How many people even care about this book? The greatest work of English literature in all time, the greatest, most published book ever in the history of the world is the King James Bible. Not the NIV, not the New American Standard, not the New King James, not any of that other satanic garbage. The King James Bible is the greatest book that ever showed up on this earth, and the vast majority of people could care less. Mm -hmm. Or couldn't care less. They said his counsel at naught. That book, yeah. You know, some guy has a funeral, loses a loved one or whatever else, and the funeral home gives him a little cedar box with a little white King James Bible in it. And what's the guy do? Oh, oh thank you. You know, thank you. And he's over oh, grieving your loss or whatever. Yeah, thank you. And the guy just takes it and you know, puts it someplace. Why don't you read the book? The greatest book ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's God do? Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. A lot of you people out there that judge me, that say I'm crude and rude and everything else, what do you do with that verse? Do you realize there's a God up there that you claim to worship that's actually not just going to laugh at people, he's actually going to mock them. Great white throne judgment, somebody comes up there and says, oh please God, please, uh -huh, I made a mistake. And God doesn't up there and say, I am sorry. You may not. He's up there going, oh, please, God. Oh. He's mocking them. 
Depart from me, cursed and everlasting. Is that the God you worship? Oh, I just ignore that part of the scripture. I, just, I, I don't want to talk about that. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Reprobate. Verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Sounds like you're kind of terrified of something there. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. You know what's wrong with this nation right now? A lot of people, they're trying to bring America back. Trump's coming out. We're going to make America great again. And all this other stuff. Do you fear God? Well, no. Um, I, I love God. I think God's you know, great. I love you know, the Bible and I love certain things. But uh, fear? No, I don't fear God. And they don't. You know, it used to be people would actually pardon themselves when they used profanity. Men would actually not use profanity in front of women and children. Now they use profanity in front of women and children because they want to keep up with the women and children using profanity. I mean, it's that bad. It's that insane. Well, but we're going to bring America back again. No, we're not. No, we're not. Um, hey, I support things. I'm trying to bring things back, whatever. But it's only so I can, can you know, maintain my freedom of speech and continue trying to preach the gospel to wicked people out there. That's the only reason I support what's coming. The alt right's going to come to power. Bringing the the liberal left, they're going to just wreck this country over this year, and then alt right comes to power probably with martial law, and come in and start just taking people off to the camps. More than likely. Is what's going to happen. I'm going to do my best to try to maintain freedom of speech, freedom of religion, because that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. Um, but if you think America is going to come back to a nation that God's going to bless, you are seriously mistaken. And um, you're going to learn to fear. There's going to be a lot of things to be afraid of in the future. And you know what? If you spent the vast majority of your life rejecting Jesus Christ and laughing at this book, there's going to come a point in time when you're going to call upon the Lord and He won't be there. All, see, all the, the big problem with the atheists right now, they think to themselves, we're, we're winning. We're seeing Christianity disappear. And, oh, look at this. There's less people that believe in God now. And <laughs> uh, What you don't understand is you're actually seeing God move away from this nation. So when the really bad stuff comes and people start going, God, help me. God will just be up there laughing. <clears throat> Verse 30. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof, like we read earlier. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Hmm. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. The prosperity of fools. You get a bunch of people in the finance world and whatever else, and they're making people into mortgage-backed securities, and they're doing all this scheming and financial stuff, and the Federal Reserve is going to inject more money and, and quantitative tightening, quantitative easing, easing, and we're going to do all this fiscal monetary policy, and we're going to you know, all the modern monetary theory to say that it's actually getting better. It's prosperity of fools. What's it going to do? It's going to slay a lot of people. Lots of people are going to die. Remember those old film videos and things of reels in World War II, the dead bodies there on the trailers, you know, and everything? People just, you know, here, take a dead body and go throw it in the pit over there. That's America in the future. But worse this time. It's not going to be six million people, Jews supposedly or whatever else that were killed in the camps. And I say supposedly, Lord only knows. I mean, how many people actually died or there could have been more, could have been less. I have no idea. But the whole point is, there's a lot of people died in World War II. You know, there's no time to even bury them. We have to make mass graves, big, dig big holes and just shovel them right in. It's going to be worse in this country. I'll give you a more short word of prophecy on that one. Why? Not because it's some thing that's been revealed to me only or whatever. No, because that's what the Bible says. The Lord's going to have to supernaturally shorten the days in the future so that some flesh can be saved. Hey, Earth, Mother Earth, <laughs> um, Make way because about 8 billion people are about ready to start coming into you. Hopefully there will be more sinkholes out there. Maybe we can use those to, but to 
masses of dead bodies in. <laughs> Such a terrible thing. Warning you. You see, I'm not saying these things and then offering no solution. And you say, well, I'm going to just, oh, we have to get this guy off of YouTube. We have to get him out of here. We just have to silence his voice like good atheists like to do. They like to silence people. It's kind of weird. Um, they're not actually for freedom of speech. Um, it's still going to come. Okay? You're uh, at your house someday, and, and all of a sudden you see on the news it says that uh, Russia and China, the BRICS nations, are officially invading America. And they are taking no prisoners. They're coming into cities and everybody dies. Every American citizen, doesn't matter who they are, their race, their religion, their age, whatever, everyone dies. And about that time you hear somebody coming down through the town, running as fast as they can and they're saying, the, the military, the BRICS military, they're an hour away. Run for your life. I don't know if I like that. That's just kind of negative. I, just kind of ruins my day. I don't know if I should actually believe in that or not. I don't, you know, if they were more loving, maybe I would believe in it. They're coming. God is coming. I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to tell you. Well, we'll just kill off Brian and then, and then God won't come. No, he's still going to come regardless of what happens to me. Get this channel taken down, whatever else. He's still coming. But here's the good news. Verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. In other words, it doesn't say quiet from fear of God. It's fear of evil. The Lord will protect you. You want supernatural proof that God exists? Get saved and watch him protect you. I've seen it so many times things you want proof of miracles i've seen it in my own life and the lord will not allow that stuff to be videotaped and whatever documented and whatever else because the just shall live by faith not by sight so there have been many times where the lord has done things for me there's no explanation no scientific explanation for it and i've seen it and i think wow thank you lord thank you so much for protecting me i mean there have been so many times i should have been killed I should have died many times over, and the Lord just protects me. He's just there for me. I sure thank the Lord that I am saved going into this very bad year of 2024. Chapter 2, let's continue on here. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding... I, I didn't seem to uh, see entertainment in there. Hmm. Yea, if thou criest after uh, the new Nintendo or the virtual reality or computer, no, after knowledge, till I come give attendance to reading, Paul writes to Timothy. Hmm. And liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Hey, you know what? Um, we just discovered recently that out in this one area here in your local area, that uh, it turns out that there was actually an ancient Viking, you know, expedition that came through. Eric the Red came over and he had a bunch of his guys and they, they had stolen a whole bunch of gold and whatever. And they buried in that area and it was never found. But we've been able to find it in that area. And we know for sure it's in this one field. Everybody and their cousin would be out there digging in that field. But yet, I come out and I say, here you go. All the treasures of wisdom and understanding, the God that created this world and everything else around this world, he wrote this book. I don't want any of that counsel. I don't want any of that reproof. Foolish. Verse 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Well, you just, you know, I have to be, have everything explained to me and, and whatever. That's the problem, again, with modern ev atheistic evolutionists. Because they want to say, show me proof of God, but I don't want the fear of the Lord. Uh, no, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You're not going to find the knowledge of God. You're not going to have answers to your question until you humble yourself and come and fear God. 
and say, I don't want to go to hell when I die. Verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Hmm, the word of God. Let's go back to the New Testament, the book of Romans. I'll show you the New Testament tie and you say, what's well, Old Testament? I thought I heard the one time that we aren't supposed to be in the Old Testament or something. So that's just Old Testament when God was mean. And now God is much nicer. Now, now God is a God of love. You know, and, and, you know, Brother Brian, I know that you mean well, but, you know, you could be driving people away if they hear your sarcastic tone and, and you're kind of, you're not smiling again. We keep trying to tell you to smile, Brian, and you just won't smile. Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. Here you have a reference back to the Old Testament. Romans 3.10, as it is written, referring back to something in the past that's already been written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Referring to the people that don't have the fear of the Lord. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. All the rioters don't fear God. All the international financier type of people and whatever else that con continue to mess with people and steal money and everything, there's no fear of God before their eyes. All the political scheming, all the Hollywood actors and actresses and all the musicians out there that worship Satan and do ritual, satanic ritual videos and things, no fear of God before their eyes. Every single evil, wicked person out there, there's not one of them that fears God. Luke chapter 21. There was a time when uh, people feared God more. And there was more reverence for this book. That's why it was a lot better time back then. Wasn't sinless, wasn't perfect. There were still bad things that were going on. But you know what? The uh, evil people had to really toe the line back then, back in the past. Now, uh, the devil has worked so hard to get this book removed. Removed it from the public schools here in America in 1963. I mean, just, okay, you want to be scientific? Look and chart crime and evil and all kinds of other things that have happened since 1963 to now. It's gotten so much worse. That's just a coincidence, though, I guess, right? I don't think so. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. This is a future reference here. This is out in the future. This has not happened yet. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Um, now that's just far out. I mean, because today, here in 2024, January 2024, the thought of Jerusalem being compassed with armies, I mean, that would never happen, right? <laughs> uh, no, it's very possible in the future. Israel's at war. They're doing a genocide in Gaza. So well, I thought you said you're for Israel. I thought you said it's just genocide. It is genocide because that's what they have to do in order to get people out of the land that shouldn't be there and that refuse to leave. Uh, well, well, don't you know, Brian, that Israel was created by the Illuminati and it's an evil, terrible place? Um, no, actually, the Bible said that Israel would come back in unbelief. They have a right to that land. And um, even if they don't want to fight for it, God will make it happen. God will force them to fight for that land because it's part of his end time prophecy. It's going to happen. Well, that's just your interpretation. Okay, then get rid of me. Unsubscribe. Don't watch any more of the videos. And then you'll see everything change and the words that, the, that a crazy preacher like me said, it'll all just go away. No, it won't. 
you will see Jerusalem in the future, future compassed with armies, surrounded by armies. Verse 21, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein to. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. All things are written may be fulfilled. And you know you're dealing with a real dumb bunny when you deal with one of these preterist people or historicist or whatever they want to call themselves, just another satanic cult. And they say that everything in the New Testament, everything in the Bible has been fulfilled. <laughs> uh, okay, no, it has not. Just read through the book of Revelation and see what they do as well. Then it's just symbolic. You know, when the third of the trees burn up, well, that's just symbolizing, you know, the dollar defaulting or something or the dollar being taken off the gold standard in 1971 or, you know, some kind of foolish nonsense. Uh, no, all the words of the book of the New Testament have not been fulfilled yet. It's future, future out there. Verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. What's the time period coming? What's the great tribulation to try the church, to see who is truly saved and who is not? Uh, no, it's not. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. It's for the Jews. Okay? There's mingled Jews that don't really have a right to be called Jews anymore. And then there's ones that are kindredly pure, that they're over there in Israel and things. And the New Testament is going to be revealed to those people. The revelation of Jesus Christ. If you're saved, you don't need the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's already, you know, been revealed to you. But to the Jewish people, he has yet to be revealed. Because they've been taught by their satanic rabbis and things down through the centuries that Jesus is not the Messiah. They've been rejecting God for centuries. So the wrath is coming upon this people, the Jews. Verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. It's coming. You can see it. Verse 25, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Is it perplexing to see the way things are right now? Yes. Is it going to get better? Well, if you're an evolutionist, you have to say yes to that. Because man always gets better. Things always get better if you believe in evolution philosophy. But if you're a realist, if you actually can deal with reality out there, you know, um, you realize uh, things aren't getting better. They're getting worse. But look at verse 26. This is where we're going to finish our study. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, if this book is right, things are going to get worse. And I don't mean, well, you know, we all go through cycles and there's things that it gets worse and then it gets better and then it gets worse and it gets better. Now, I'm saying it gets worse and worse and worse and doesn't get better. All right? Um, if this book is right, the more sure word of prophecy, and I'm saying that to atheists, if you're saved, you already know this book is right. You've already experienced this book. King James Bible, again, I'll say it that way. You know that this book is true. But to atheists out there, if you want to question this book, if you want to put it to your little scientific standards and say, okay, I need to see some things, I need to see some proof, you're going to see the proof. Okay? But here's the whole thing. If you don't get things sorted out soon... You're going to get to a point in time when God is going to laugh at you and mock you because you didn't want anything to do with his counsel or his reproof. Uh, you better not waste your time. Well, I'm just going to stick around and see what happens. I'd like to see some more proof before I make a decision one way or the other. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a fire over there burning. Eh, I'll see if it puts itself out. Well, it seems to be spreading. <clears throat> The smoke's getting a little bit bad. I think it still might go out. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, you know, it's funny. There's a this uh, stupid, ridiculous website, uh, Rational Wiki, and they have this huge, big thing that they wrote about me. I'm quite honored by that, but uh, they have more on me than they have on the Pope. And I pointed this out in other studies. You know, it just blows my mind. I'm more of a threat to atheism 
apparently, or to at least the atheists on Rational Wiki, than the Pope is. Some you know guy with a 50,000 subscriber YouTube channel, as opposed to the head of the, the Roman Catholic Church with the Vatican Bank and all the other things that they scheme and whatever else in the Jesuit order and all these other you know, nefarious things that the Vatican's involved in and all the pedophiles and all the cover-up and all the... And that's less of a threat than me <laughs> to atheism. Uh, yeah, because they realize that he's an atheist. He's one of them. He's just, you know, making money through religion. So you have religious atheists and you have secular atheists. But uh, God is the ultimate terrorist. And um, if you think, oh no, God's a God of love and everything, oh, you're going to see. You're going to see in the future. Uh, it's not going to go back to some kind of a nice peaceful time. Again, understand the vast majority of history, of the history of mankind, not the H word, um, the vast majority of the, the history of mankind, um, it's been a lot of war and death and suffering and horror and evil and everything. It's been a real bad time on this earth. Uh, you know why we had freedom? Because of some enlightenment that came from having the scriptures printed in the language of the common people and taken out of the hands of the clergy and given to the laity. That's what it, that's what it was, the Gutenberg Press. What was the first book that they were printing on there? The Bible. Luther's Heilige Schrift, Tyndale's Holy Scriptures, his New Testament. Catholic priests, and they came out and they said, what's the best way to, to dethrone this evil system that we work for? Hmm. If we could get the Scriptures into the hands of the common man. Worked back then. Oh, but it's no good today anymore. We're so much smarter now. We're so much more advanced now. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. And it took centuries to get this book and to use the sword of the Spirit to take down the power of the Roman Catholic Church. And the Roman Catholic Church finally lost its grip on the different nations over there in Europe. And people started to become free. And look at how we went from the Dark Ages into all the good things. And now we're going back into the Dark Ages again. Why? Because of a book. Because they didn't want anything to do with the counsel of the Lord. That's why. And all these atheists out there, oh, well, the Bible contradicts because it says one guy had this many chariots and the other had this many chariots. So I reject the whole book. Uh, you're rather stupid. And there's, a, there's, you know, you can explain why different, you know, things are there in the Old Testament. So, you know, there's explanations. Many preachers have come out and answered all these contradictions, supposed contradictions over the years. But why bother studying that? It's easier just to kind of trash on the Bible and then say, okay, we'll move on into, you know, paganism or something. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, as you go into the future, um, you're going to be terrorized by God. You know why? Because the Bible said so. So I'm going to give you some homework, if you care. Read the book of Revelation, and then ask yourself a very sincere, real question and say, are these things possible with the way that this world is going? And if you're honest, I think you'll say yes. I could see these things happening. These levels of warfare, peace being taken from the earth, famine, pestilence. If you're honest, if you're not, well, you know, I, you know, I, don't, I don't believe in that stuff. It's just fairy tales and things. Well, you, you'll see. You'll see. Um, I'm going to put some salvation messages here at the end. Um, go over like this. I'll put a couple salvation messages linked here. And you can watch those and learn what it means to truly be genuinely born again to be a child of the living God. And then the understanding of God will come upon you and you'll start to make sense of things that right now are confusing to you and you'll say, I don't really understand. You need to get saved. So that will be it and we'll see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. 
thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.